All right, welcome everybody. I'm David Jacobson, and um, uh, Terry uh, Hotz uh, invited me to be here today. And just, we came up with this idea because all of us use our either iPhone or your Android uh, to shoot video with. And what happens is, for most of us, we end up with this library of these short little videos that we've got on there, and we just, what the hell are we going to do with them? And you want to share them on social media, you, or you want to keep them for posterity, whatever it is, you know, how do you do that? So that's what I'm going to explain to you today, how, how to do it. The reality is, this is um, a, a, trying to think of an analogy. The only thing I could think of really is uh, the best, it probably is cooking, is that um, for those of us who love to cook, I'm one of them. It's a passion. We love doing it. There are others who just would rather shoot themselves in the head than, 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 than to boil an egg. They just don't enjoy cooking. I get that. And it's going to be the same thing with this, with technology. There's going to be those of you who are just really going to look at this and say, I'm there. I am right there. And there are those others who just will say, oh, I don't think so. So that's fine. The reality is, is that Editing takes a while, learning how to do it. It's just, you just don't download the program and then boom, get right to it. Unless you're 10, 11, 12 years old, yes, then you can do it. It's just, I don't know what it is. What is it with the kids? You girls right there, you're probably born with the ability to just, yeah, you, it took me to like 20 years to do the Adobe Premiere, probably taking like 20 minutes. So it's, it's a whole other philosophy and understanding technology. That being said, what um, I, I wish I could get each one of you, you know, we could film a little something and then we could do it. But what I'm going to do is just uh, explain to you um, what the, the footage is that I have here. And then I'm going to show you how to use the editing system. How many of you have iPhones? Just give me a, a, a hands. How many of you have Androids? Okay, so the program that I have that I'm going to be using here, it's called Rush. And it's... Um, uh, it's an Adobe Premiere program, and uh, you'll see it in just a minute. It's called Rush. Rush. Yeah, yeah, R-U. Um, and uh, that's the program that I, I, I think is probably one of the best to use. However, that being said, there's all sorts of different programs out there that you can get. Um, a lot of them, if like, for example, if you, like, you have some uh, CDs at home and you want to duplicate your CDs, when you buy the CD program that allows you to duplicate it on your computer, it'll come with a free editing program. So all editing programs are the same. They're all the same. They just have little variances and little differences. The biggest difference in most of them is what is your ability to do. In other words, how, how detailed can you get your editing? Can you put titles on it? Can you add music to it? Can you, uh, can you make little changes on the timeline? Some will do that, and others just say, you know, drag and drop, and whatever you got on there, that's it. You're stuck with that. So this program here is a, it, it allows you to do some detail work with it. However, unlike the program that I do all my, uh, my videos with, there's an Adobe Premiere Pro, um, I can do all sorts of incredible, but that's what they use to make movies with. So it's just really, really detailed, and it takes a long time to learn how to do it. However, this program was also going to take a little while, but you can probably master it if you wanted to. If you sat down and worked on it, probably take you a couple hours to go, okay, I can do this. I can figure this out. If you're the person who likes to cook. That's why I use that analogy. If you're the person who sits down and after five minutes you think, I'm going to throw my computer to the window and that's it. This may not be for you. So, um, before, I don't want to waste a lot of time with uh, uh, downloading and doing things like that. So I've done a lot of stuff in advance. However, I want to do things if there are those of you who don't understand. So let me, just in a show of hands, how many of you already know how to take the video photos off your phone and, and, and transfer them directly to your computer? Okay, then I will show you how to, yet, uh, one more show of hands who know how to do that? Okay, then, then I will show you, there's not enough. Let me show you how to do that. Now, again, on your, um, when it comes to transferring the footage, if you do Windows or if you do, I, um, again, how many Windows in here? And uh, Macs? Okay, so about 50-50, okay. 
Windows is a little bit more complicated. I, I'm, a, I'm both a Windows person and a, and a Mac. I prefer Mac. So, let me go to some of the basics first. If you're going to be doing stuff for Instagram or for um, uh, TikTok, any of those social media programs, they prefer you hold your phone uh, vertically for, for TikTok and Instagram. Facebook can go either way, uh, but uh, for TikTok and for Instagram and a few other of those little ones, uh, they prefer you hold your phone this way. And then so you want to remember that. As a, as a videographer, as somebody who likes to shoot the film, it drives me crazy when you have the vertical. I want to shoot someone in the head. Because uh, what happens is, is when you, later on, when you want to use that for normal size viewing, what uh, have you probably seen on a, on a news program that they'll have that shot of a, somebody who sent in a video of something that happened, and you see behind it, there's like a, it looks like an expanded view of that. That's exactly what it is. So, so rather than sticking black bars behind it, they stick, they take the video of that same video and they, they mirror it so that they stretch it so it just doesn't look like just a black box behind it. So my point is, is if you want to, if you shoot your video vertically and you want to use it later on in a, in a, a video and if you want to do it this way, you're going to be stuck. So my suggestion is to all the time is always shoot it cinematography wise. Always hold your phone like this. Photos, videos, always. Just always hold your phone this way, unless TikTok or Instagram. Um, the main thing that you want to do, and if you can, I'm just saying this, is, that, is whenever you're filming something, uh, one of the beauties about being an editor and learning how to edit is that when you shoot, the difference between someone who just shoots and someone who edits is when you're shooting something as an editor as well, you've got the story in your head of how you're going to do it later. It's how you're going to tell the story. So, for example, you're walking with your, your family and you see this beautiful sunset, the sunrise, you see the dogs playing, the kids are out there, um, your girlfriend's out there, your boyfriend, whatever it is, and you see this, and you, rather than just grab it and, and shooting it like that, what you do is you think of it and say, okay, I'm going to shoot it this way, and what I want to do is I want to also grab the sunrise and I want to get them in the shot. Because later on, when I edit, I want to be able to have all of that in the scene. So again, understanding as a, as a videographer, as you're shooting with the intention of editing later on, you're going to shoot differently. So it's going to really be a wonderful benefit to your, your film work. Once you shoot the stuff, now what, this is what I'm going to do today is because of the fact that we can't do everybody's individual videos, we're going to do my video, and you're going to help me. I'm, uh, as a lot of people here know, um, I'm a grandpa, and I just adopted my granddaughter. An interesting family situation. <laughs> That's a whole other video right there. <laughs> but anyway, so the, the adoption went through uh, just uh, on, uh, on uh, Tuesday. 2 22 22. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. At 2 p.m. <laughs> and, um, and my friend, dear, dear friend Phil, right back there, who's videotaping this uh, event here, um, he had my phone and he shot the whole thing. He shot the, uh, the, the process in the courtroom. So there's a lot of other footage that was there, but what I did as an advance is I, I took through some of the stuff so I wouldn't spend a lot of time today doing that. But what I want to do is just tell the story. And one of the things that I, I, I suggest to all of you is that as you're learning how to edit and as you're filming things, don't be afraid later on after you've shot this to set the camera up and film yourself. And that's what I did here. Is say, one of the, 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 welcome everybody, I want to show you right now was a, what my, the, my family and I, we just went out to the, the, to the, uh, up to the um, Black Canyon and we had the most wonderful time, and I just wanted to share, all, share it with all of you today. Boom. Just turn the phone off. Now you've got this. So now you've got a beginning. And then if you want to, you can say, oh, by the way, you'll notice over to the right hand there, 
we were looking at something, and you'll see down there, there was a bald eagle that landed by the rock. Let, take a look at that when you're doing it. And so, boom, you're off. So now you've got the, your, your, um, your narrating your own little video as you go along, and it's, it, could, it changes the whole dynamic. So when you plug your uh, phone in, whether it's, an I, whether it's a Mac or it's a uh, Windows, it's going to recognize, hopefully, recognize your, your phone. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just show you. This is uh, for a Mac. You just go to your launch pad, and they have a thing on Mac which is called an image capture, and that's this little CC right there. Click on that, and now what it's doing, it's going to read the phone, and it's going to pull up all the photos and videos that are on your camera roll. Okay, there they are. So now, there's a couple, there's a, there's a few ways that you can, uh, you can do this. You can do it onto an external hard drive, or you can do it and build it right onto your desktop. It's up to you. I, I use an external drive because I've got so much stuff. But um, what you want to do is create a file. And I'm sure all of you know how to do that. Um, but what I've done here, I created a file, and I have it, here it is. I have it right here, and I have it under Grand Mesa Arts and Entertainment Center. And as you can see, I already put some stuff in there, but I just want to show you real quickly. So here's here's the uh, here's your phone uh, here's your phone with all the videos on there, and. Here is uh, what the, these are the two recordings I did of myself, I added them on, and then over here, this is the courtroom footage, it was right here. Here's a couple uh, still photos. So let me just show you how simple it is, let's just grab one of these uh, photos, and you just, you know, whether it's video or whatever, you just click on it and drag and drop it right in there. That's all there is to it, to drag and drop it onto your file that you've created. And do that with those, all the videos that you want. And that's where you're gonna, that's gonna be the home plate right there, home base for all the footage that you want to use. So we get rid of that. Let's minimize this for now. Okay, so you've got, you've taken all the video off of your phone and you've, tra you've transferred your videos onto a file. Any questions so far? Does that all make sense? At this point, yeah, please. Do you use a different program to do that, or do you just drag it directly from your iPhone onto your phone? Right, right. At this point, you're just using your regular, your, either your Windows or your Mac, whatever. All you're doing right now is just taking the footage, whether it's photos or whether it's video, directly off your phone, and you're transferring it onto a file onto your computer's hard drive or external hard drive, like you saw here. Any other questions? Or does that does that all make sense at this point? Okay. So now you've done that. So now what you're going to do is you're going to, this is right here, the, the Rush program. This is the one I just told you about, Rush. And again, it can be, it can be any video program that you choose. On the Rush program, Say again? On the Rush program, I downloaded it, and it says continue with Adobe, continue with Apple, continue with Yeah. It's whichever one you want. If you want it to be, if you want it to be uh, with your your uh, Apple account or your Google account, whatever password that you uh, and uh, username and password you want, that's what you want. That's what you want to use. Yeah, it'll be identified with that. Okay. Good. That's a actually that's a really good question. <laughs> yeah. No, that's right. Cause that, it's usually the little tiny things at the beginning will stump you. Um, yeah. So yes, that's a, you want it to be associated with, and then um, the program. Um, the Rush program is free to download, but then they'll charge you later on for it. Uh, and then you can choose which, how you want it to work. Is there an app? Yes, it's an app. It's an app. Yeah, that's, that, what, you, what you see right here, this is the app. Can you get it in the app store? There it is right there on my phone. Oh, you can't see it. I, I, I downloaded it from the app store, whether it's Android or whether it's uh, Apple. 
a, a Mac. I mean, it's just, it's right there from the Apple. It's, it's a, a download, and you just download that, and you're set. Okay, so now we're going to click on the RU program. Okay, now that's the I've created. So then you're going to click on Create New Project. Now the wonderful thing about this program uh, that I believe is is first number one. Uh, you're going to create the program, so uh, you open it up, and now what you want to do is go to your, um, uh, go to your whatever the, the file is that has all the videos on it. I've got it here on the on this uh, extended drive, and I have it under GME, GMAC. Are you in your Rush account now? Say again. Are you in your Rush account now? Yes, I'm on the Rush program. Okay. I'm on the actual program right now. Okay, so I opened up the program, I said create new project, and then I've got to, in order to create the new project, now I have to open up the files in order to download the file. So I'm gonna open up the file here, what has all my videos on there. Now this is the wonderful thing about this particular program, is that in advance, you're going to want to have spent just a little bit of time looking at the files where your videos are and which ones you want, how you want it to line up. So in other words, if you, again, if you, uh, you want uh, the, uh, the, the snowboarding and you want to get a shot, you, you sh had your video and you shot the, f some, them at the top of the hill and then you got them coming down, then you stop the camera and then you start it again and you got a shot of them after they've fallen down picking themselves up and you know, putting their hands up in the air, you stop the camera um, uh, you've got another shot of someone else coming down the hill or the dog rushing over and tackling them, you got that. So that's how you want to have the video, the, the, you tell the story. So you don't want to pick the, and pick them randomly. You don't want the, the dog chasing, the, uh, chasing after the person to be number one. That's gonna be number two or three or four, or whatever, depending on how many times you started and stopped the camera. Say again? That's the sequence, exactly. And now I'm gonna show you how you do it. Yeah, 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 no, good question. So, so I know at this point that um, it was, the very first thing is gonna be me saying something. And that's gonna, so I'm gonna click on that. And that comes number one. Number two is going to be the courtroom. And I've gotten, and see the way it, it was shot here? Uh, this one doesn't, I wanted to tell you, this one, this particular uh, shot here was shot by somebody else and they shot it vertically. And I'm going to hit them later on when I get home. So. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to click on that. That's number two. Then I'm going to, go, uh, after that's over, I, I've got another spot where I come back again. So I'm going to be number three. And then after that, there's a video that I want to have at the end and that's going to be number four. So there we go. We got one, two, three, four. And now I'm going to say create. And look at this. This is, look, I mean, te te technology is unbelievable. There you go. It laid everything out for me in the way I want it to appear in the, on the video. Now comes the interesting part. Um, when you're starting and stopping your camera, there's a few little seconds there where you look like a, you know, a dork. Uh, 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 hi! And then you come and you're going to, and then, well, you want to get rid of the dorky part. Okay. So here's, the be here's what it looks like right now. Okay. For those of you who uh, normally hear my voice behind the camera, following Mel around and telling a little story about today I do something a little bit different because today is a very very special day besides being 2 on a Tuesday it's also the day that I officially adopted uh, Mel uh, okay so that's that part so so what I'm going to do is I want to just get rid of that little awkward part at the beginning hi okay so and, and then see how I'm making it go back just a little bit before I said hi, right about there. 
So now you can see down, see where that little thing is at the bottom? I'm going to move, cl hold, uh, click, and drag right to, that, right to the timeline there, right up to the, where that little uh, line is, this little line is here. And now look. Hi. For those of you. Isn't that amazing? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right, so what we got, so we're going to have that, that that's going to play to the, to where I, right, to right to the end of that clip right there. And what, in, the, in this business and what they call, they call the, these particular uh, little things, they're all called clips now. So whenever you look for anything and uh, you look for help online, which by the way, Phil and I constantly talk about the fact we got YouTube University. I can't tell you how many times in a day when I'm doing something and something happens, I just Google and I just go to YouTube or I'll just Google and say, mouse will not move, ready to throw window, you know, and there it is, ready to throw your computer through the window, the mouse won't move, here's the, how you fix it. So the same thing with this, you know, using, uh, um, uh, uh, having a problem with the clip with the Adobe, uh, Adobe Premiere, with Adobe Rush, and then click on it, and there'll be all sorts of amazing videos on there that'll guide you through. So that's, that's the other thing about the program, is that it's, it's, uh, it's so well respected and so well used that there's a lot of people who put videos together to help you get through it because it's a, a good program. Okay, so here we are, and so we just want to Part of it. I, I just wanted to say thank you so much, and wow, <laughs> can't wait to find out what's next. Thank you all so, so much. Okay, so we want it to stop right about there. So now I'm going to grab the other end of the clip and I'm just going to drag it right to that blue line. There you go. Now, go ahead. When I pull the arrow to the right or to the left, it, 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 it erases that. It, it, yeah, it, it gets the part that I don't want. Okay. So, right, once I put, once I, you put your mouse down, it, see, it turns into here and it turns into that little thing. Okay. And that's what I dragged and dropped it. Now, what's going to happen is, as I'm playing it, <laughs> can't wait to find out what's next. Thank you all so, so much. Okay, so now, what this is called is it's, it's called a cut. But I'd like to have it just a little bit softer. I'd just rather have it be just so to transition from that to that, not be so, so rough. There are many, many times where you, a, a cut is really what you want. It's just because you're gonna, like on TV commercials, almost every single thing is a cut. They cut, 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 and that works. But when you're, tra when you're transitioning from uh, one particular moment to another, you either want to go to like a dissolve, which is like a, a dissolve is used usually if you're, you're kind of going through time, if you will, you know, that you're transiting the time. This is going from one uh, particular uh, subject matter to extending it to the next point, next uh, adventure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, um, a uh, black. So right down here, see on the right hand side here, You've got these little, this is for, right here is for titles. We'll do that in a minute. Here is for, um, for transitions. And then you've got your uh, audio down here. So what I'm gonna do now is just gonna click on this transition. And you've got all sorts of different types of transitions. Now, if you wanted to put together a photo show, just photos, that's when you can kind of get really kind of fun with the transitions. You can do a domino thing, you can do a, it'll, a, do a really creative stuff, you can, get, you can really have some fun with that, going from one photo to another. Um, sometimes people get kind of carried away, and you can usually tell when somebody's just, just started editing and they went crazy. <laughs> Look at all the transitions. It can be a little bit too much, but sometimes it can be really appropriate and fun. That's where you want to use some of those fun transitions that you see here, is that when you're doing a photo slideshow. For video, unless it's really appropriate, maybe you're doing a music video, and if the music video, you wanna do some really hard, interesting looking transitions, then you'd wanna go with some of the fun stuff if you want to. But for just telling a simple little story, you wanna go either to dissolves or to, um, or to black. 
So what I'm going to do is I've got right, I've got here a black, and I'm going to I'm going to drag and drop it right between those two clips. And right now it's set for a half a second. I'm going to bring it to two seconds. And you can see I'm just see I'm moving this line here. Okay. So now look what happens between the, the two. Thank you all so, so much. Thank Bye. you. Andrew. See that? You know, just this, a little bit of a, makes a big difference. All right. Kurt's going to make the following findings. First of all, findings. Now, you can tell uh, that audio is kind of, it's kind of low on there. It's the way it was recorded. And plus he has his mask on. So I'm just going to bring the audio up on that just a little bit. And you can see right here it says clip volume. So again, clip. And so I'm going to bring that up to 100%. Let's see if that makes any, any difference. Is available for adoption. I'm finding that Mr. Jacobson appears to have good moral character. <laughs> he doesn't know me very well, does he? Okay, so that's, that, that, that's um, the, the courtroom footage. And then, so what you'll see here, watch it again. Okay, that, that's kind of loud, I think. So let's bring that down to about, let's say, uh, 80%. Okay. So why don't we stop it? What do you think? Stop it like right around the handshake? Yeah. Right there? Yeah. Does that make sense? That makes sense, yeah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring again, I'm going to grab my, bring this little bar in here, and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it right to that blue line, and that's where it's going to stop. And then I'm going to leave it there for a minute, and we're going to go to the next scene. Okay, so now this is where I stuck that other little clip of me saying, oh, by the way. So now, again, you can see there's that little awkward moment there when I'm turning the camera on. What we want to do is get rid of that. So let's go ahead. Oh, right there. So let's say I want to get it just before I talk, right about there. And now I'm going to get and grab that little bar and I'm going to bring it right to that blue line, just get rid of those few frames. Boom. So let's see how that works. Oh, I almost forgot. So now we've got an option. I can either leave it a cut, or we can do another dissolve. So let's, you all tell me what you think is best. Let's watch it, and let's all be editors for a moment and see which we like better. Here's this, this. I almost forgot. Okay, now let's see what it looks like with a transition. Black, and again, we'll bring it up to about two seconds. Let's say a second and a half. Let's see what we think is better. forgot. What do you think? Cut or the dissolve? Dissolve, everybody said, yeah. Okay. So then, um, the court allowed me and wanted me, actually, to produce a little video of some of, like I put down a little montage of uh, since Mel arrived up until uh, the most recent. So uh, we put that together and they actually showed it in the courtroom. And um, I'm going to show it to you now. So uh, enjoy. Okay, stop right there. Because then there's that, no, no, so I'm going to show you here, because what happens right after I do that. And um, I'm going to show it to you now. So uh, enjoy. 
Okay, no. so we want to get rid of that little awkward moment there. So now we're going to go ahead and, okay. All right. So now here, we're going to go shift from that and we're going to go to the, the video that I created. Enjoy. Y'all fed? <laughs> okay, so let's stick a dissolve in there on top of that dissolve. And we'll make that one two seconds for sure. Maybe let's say two and a half seconds. Just, to, uh, just add a little bit more drama. Okay, hold on. Go to now. So uh, enjoy. Y'all fed? <laughs> now you get the bottle. Maybe. Okay, so that's the video. We'll, we'll watch the whole thing in just a few minutes. Um, so now we've got, that's pretty much uh, the story that we're telling. We've got that edited. But what we want to do now is we want to add at the very beginning, like, who is this guy? Who is this person? So what we want to do is we want to play it here. Hi. For those of you who, uh, who normally hear my voice. Boom. Right about there would be a good time. Let's put my name in. So now we're going to go to the title area. You see right up there, title and add graphic. Now, this is where it can get absolutely crazy with the type of graphics that are available for you to choose from. And um, in, uh, d when you watch any kind of a documentary, 60 Minutes, any kind of a show, whatever, whatever you've seen, they always have what the, the name of the person. They call that lower thirds. That's what's referred to when they, they call the lower thirds. So when you're looking for titles on here, which I'll show you in a second, you'll choose lower thirds for the name of somebody because where it's positioned. It's right off, of, you usually see that instead of having it right in the face or taking up the whole screen, you just want to have the name just appear right, uh, right below that as they're speaking. And you just, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, look, here's the title, transition graphics, see the different types of things here, overlays, there's all sorts of different, what we're looking for is titles. We're going to click more, and now we're going to scroll down See, if I chose that one, it'd be right in my face. And this one here, we don't want to have a star in front of my face, and uh, this is another big one. So what we're looking for is a lower third. So we keep, keep tra traveling down, keep looking. Aha, basic lower third, right there. That's what we want. Click on that, and then you see at the add button, it says add. And there we go. Now we get rid of that title thing there, and look how it popped right where the line was. So now what we want to do is we want to, right now the, uh, the default for a title is usually right around four to five seconds. I like it to be just a little bit longer because sometimes it's, uh, you want to read it. So I usually stretch it to about seven or eight. So there's right there. So now there's the title. You click right on the screen there. Whoop. Uh. Okay, and I'm going to type my name. David Jacobson, and then the subtitle will be parentheses, Mel's grandpa. Okay, now, it's kind of big. So what we want to do is see the font, so it says font size. We want to make that just a little bit smaller. That's better. And, in addition to that, we want to see they've got character spacing. Look what you can do with the character spacing. You can make it, see, a little bit, a little bit more liner. Line spacing just allows you to, whoops, wrong one. Baseline shift is what I'm looking for, sorry. 
We want to bring this, see that? I want to bring, we can make it go up here, we can make it go here. So we just want it to be right about here. And then let's add a little shadow. Okay, and we've got a nice white color with the, there you go. So now let's see how that looks. Hi, for those of you uh, who normally hear my voice behind the camera, following Mel around and telling a little story about her, I thought today I'd do something a little bit different because today is a very, very special day. Okay, there you go. Now, we can leave it just like that, but I'm thinking, wouldn't it be kind of cool if we just added just a little bit more drama to it? And let's, why don't we go ahead and click on uh, music, and we're going to add a little bit of music underneath while I'm talking. So let's try that. So I'm going to go click on Browse. Where did you click the music? Sorry, my bad. Let me do that again. Okay, so right over here on the side, right there, it sees that little, that, little, that little sound wave thing there? You click on that, and that brings up your audio. So what you're going to do, what you're going to, now what, they'll, what the, the program does is that they have a library of music that you can choose from. There's two issues with that. Number one, uh, you'll have to, the, the music, uh, you've got to go through it and try to figure out what music is going to go good for that. And you could spend oy, a long time trying to choose the right music for it. In addition to that, if it's music that, um, is uh, like say it's Michael Jackson or it's the Doobie Brothers or uh, 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 Collins, what's her name? Uh, Judy. Judy Collins. Um, you, uh, that's license. So if you're going to, if they give you that option on there, then when you shoot it up to YouTube or any of those other um, programs up there, They'll send you a little thing saying uh, we're turning the, volu the it's volume off, the sound off on your video because you're not, you're not allowed to use that. You haven't had permission to use it. So whenever you choose, whatever music you might choose, so say, okay, you don't want the music they have. You're going to go to your library, your own library of music. Again, all your favorite songs are in there, and you want to put you know, a really great song that you love so much, you're running the risk of that they might, when it goes up to YouTube, or it goes up to social media, they'll send you a little notification saying that um, you, the, the music has been removed. Or they'll say the music has been, is licensed to another company. However, we're going to still keep it on there, but whatever money you might make for it is going to go to them instead. And it seems that they're doing more and more of that, which is kind of cool. So that's an option you have. Otherwise, there's a, a, a company that I use on a regular basis called Pond5, P-O-N-D, number five, Pond5. If you're gonna be doing a lot of uh, video editing and you're gonna be doing some uh, stuff that you wanna be able to put up on social media on a regular basis, it would make sense to go there, you can, and you just, they have, I mean, hundreds of thousands of songs, and you pick the genre, piano, guitar, uh, violin, uh, um, What's it, the squeeze box? Uh, accordion, yeah. Um, and you just, you know, what kind of, what is it looking for? Soft tempo, uh, real high upbeat, marching band, whatever. You just type in what you want, and then they'll give you. And it has all the prices. You can get stuff for as low as $10, $15, and you can use it for as long as you want, for as many years as you want. They've got other stuff there that'll cost you hundreds of dollars, because, I mean, you can tell the difference. It's amazing. But that being said, that's, and then you can keep that in your library. So as you're editing, you have that song that you can always grab, drag and drop, and you know what it sounds like, and it's, it's there in your library to use anytime you want. In addition to the, go ahead. You pay for it right then and there. Oh, okay. 
No, no, they won't sue you. The worst that would happen is uh, two, two th uh, three things that will happen. First thing is that they'll send you a notification saying that uh, your music is licensed and um, a, another company has claimed credit for it and therefore they will, um, uh, whatever uh, uh, monies that you make on it will be going to them instead of to you. And if you don't make any money then? It doesn't matter, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the second thing is, is that it would, uh, they would say um, it, a claim on your, uh, has been made and we're taking, we're removing the audio from your video. And that, uh, the third thing would be is that they, um, uh, what was the third thing? First, second, third? I forgot. I forgot what the third one is. Okay. I'm old. But if you're only using it for personal use, you'll never get any of those. If you use it for personal use and it's not going to be up on the internet, you're just going to put it on your hard drive, or you're going to send it to friends and family on a CD or, an, or on, a, on a thumb drive, you can use whatever you want. Okay. Yeah, it's just for personal use, that's not a problem. Thank you for that question. On yeah. the Han 5, uh, when you buy music, are you buying one song or are you buying somebody's album? You're buying one song. Went on the Pond Five, yeah. David, yeah. A film festival, if people submit with music in it, you can use that because you've gotten their permission. Okay, and then it's really only going to be it's going to be seen in a public place, but maybe not put on uh, in media. Right, and then what will happen is if in fact. And it'll, it still happens with me every once in a while with Pond 5. I paid for it, and they still send you something. I just call Pond 5 up uh, and, uh, and say, they've, and they, they take care of it. The same thing would happen if you got that, and they'd say, uh, the song that you use has been licensed, and uh, the copyright infringement has been, uh, has been started, and you, you need to notify the musician. You contact the musician, say, hey, they, they contact YouTube, there's a place where they can do it. Say yes, this uh, GMAC. They have my permission to use my music. Done. It's that simple. The other thing about Pond Five, which is kind of cool, is that if in fact you're wanting to tell a story, and you've got your little homemade videos, but in the back of your mind you're saying, wouldn't it be just cool if I could get a shot of like a sunset or a sunrise? And I don't have the ability to do that. Just type in sunrise, sunset on Pond 5, and they have all these professional video clips. And a matter of fact, uh, David, uh, your husband, he's uh, the guy who works on Tennessee, is it? Uh, the, he uses them on a regular basis, and that's how he puts together these incredible videos. You know, but he's, he's such an ingenious editor. And then mixed with David singing the song, give me a break, you know, it's fantastic. So you can really make a real, real high-end professional looking video with your amateur stuff and really create a, a beautiful little story using these little video clips that you can get from Pond 5. Ta-da! All right, so now we've got that clip there. So let's go ahead and we're gonna browse. And uh, what comes up here is my, um, is, see the, these are all the, the audio that they have from these, are all the different clips that they have on here, and then you have Braz Audio, and see soundtracks, sound effects, loops. A loop is when you have, um, uh, let's say you have a, a, a piece of uh, video that's like maybe uh, two minutes long. And the song that you love is only like 30 seconds. Well, you can get what they call a loop. So that in, what it does is it takes that 30 second clip and just repeats it and repeats it and repeats it right where it's supposed to, and you know you have no idea that it's repeating it. Just that's that's a loop. So what I want to do now is um, I want to add. So go over here to the left, and I I don't want any of their music. I've got a I've got a song that I uh, in my library, and I'm going to click on your media. And see, I already have it right here in my in that little file that I created because I knew the song I wanted to use. So I just, and you would do the same thing. You, in advance, if you know the song you want, you put it into your, your file as you're building this and then and just click on that and I'm gonna add it. There we go. Now I'm just gonna get rid of this little window and there's the music. Now I don't want the music under the whole thing. I just want the music to be under my little 
my little, so I'm dragging it and dropping, dragging it. See, I'm doing, I'm just cutting it right to where, right to where I stopped talking, and the, and just before the courtroom scene. Now you'll see it's way too loud. Listen. On Tuesday. Ah. So we need to lower that. So just underneath me. So right now it's that's 50 percent. Let's say we drop it down. Let's see what happens. What sounds like it or might maybe around. Let's try eight. Let's see what that sounds like. That I officially adopted a male. It's too low. Uh, so we want to bring it up. Let's say around 14. Let's see what that sounds like. Uh, it was just an incredible, incredible uh, situation. Uh, it was just an amazing. So what do you think? Too loud? Too soft? Sound good? I think so too. So we've got my name, we've got the music, we've got the clips done. Hi. What do you think? Want to listen? Want to watch it? See what it looks like? Hi. For those of you uh, who normally hear my voice behind the camera, following Mel around and telling a little story about her, I thought today I'd do something a little bit different because today is a very, very special day. Besides being 2 on a Tuesday, it's also the day that I officially adopted uh, Mel. Uh, it was just an incredible, incredible uh, situation. Uh, it was just an amazing event. And I just wanted to, to all of you who have been on this journey with me uh, to thank you and to bring it to this point here. And it was so successful. So uh, we've got lots and lots more videos that we'll be putting together on a regular basis just to show you that can continue the journey. There's quite a journey ahead. But without your help, without the, the, all the, the wonderful kudos that you've been giving me, the advice and everything else that you all have been a part of, I, I just wanted to say thank you so much. And wow, <laughs> can't wait to find out what's next. Thank you all so, so much. Thank you, thank you. Well said. All right. Court's going to make the following findings. First law finding that Stroud was born on October 19th, 2020 in Delta, Colorado, that the written consent for adoption filed by the department appears to be genuine, and that the child is available for adoption. On finding that Mr. Jacobson appears to have good moral character, has the ability to support and educate the child, and has a suitable home for her. The court has no concerns with either the fingerprint-based criminal background check or the trails report, which don't indicate any matters of concern. I'm also finding that the mental and physical condition of Mel makes her an appropriate subject for adoption by the petitioner. Finally, I'm finding the best interest of the child will be served by the adoption, and that it's in her best interest and welfare for the court to issue the final decree of adoption effective immediately. Congratulations, Mr. Jacobson. Mm -hmm. I almost forgot. Um, the court uh, allowed me and wanted me actually to produce a little video of some of, uh, like I put down a little montage of uh, since Mel arrived up until uh, the most recent. So uh, we put that together and they actually showed it in the courtroom. And um, I'm gonna show it to you now. So uh, enjoy. You all fed? <laughs> now you get the bottle, get your diaper changed. Grandpa, have a cup of coffee, huh? Yeah? Did you have a cup of coffee? All right, let me show you how I make my coffee, okay? Oh, wait, ready for this? Ready for this? Ready to smell this? This is going to change your life. Ready? Oh, yeah, you can smell that, can't you? Huh? Yeah, pretty soon you're going to have a cup of coffee. What? What's that? Did you just come up with that idea on your own? Did you just come up with that idea on your own? You're a genius. This is new too. So right now, <laughs> Mel has just discovered her feet. 
and she's realizing that she can grab them. <laughs> Look at that. Is that fantastic or what? This is the first time she ever heard the Supremes. See, I'm opening my mouth to try to give her a no. This is just this, this, this is what I'm dealing with. So anybody have anybody have any thoughts or ideas, please share them with me. And this is uh, this is new. Uh, Mel has this I just noticed this this morning. I wanted to share this with everybody. She is sitting up on her own without falling over. Liz Mel in a bathtub right now and we had a milestone where um, she had this little insert inside there. And um, I had to take it out because she's, she's getting bigger. I'm just so emotional right now, but I just wanted to share with you. It's just this beautiful little girl and how she's growing. It's so healthy and wonderful and happy. And yet, when you hit these little milestones, it's just really difficult, isn't it? Okay, everybody, here she is. This is the very first time on the swing outside. Here we go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> what do you think of that, huh? <laughs> yes! <laughs> You did it! <laughs> what a girl! Congratulations, Mel! You rolled over! Oh my God! There you go! You did it! Congratulations! First crawl! <laughs> <laughs> that was a walk. Way to go, Mel. <laughs> there it is. Grandpa's little piggy. <laughs> I love this so much. Good job, Mel. You're amazing. That a girl. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. 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 So the whole idea is what you want to do when you're editing is tell the story. Yes. Where can we get one of those babies? I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Pretty cute. Yeah, she is pretty cute, isn't she? Yeah. I have done some uh, small little slideshows with music on iMovie. Yes. IPad. Is it possible to import those into Rush because there's so much more there? there um, I don't know if the I, I don't know if the two programs are compatible. You'd be able to switch in the timeline. My my thinking is probably not that you already have the movie done. Mm -hmm. um, what you might be able to do is incorporate the completed film drag that into Rush, and you might be able to, might allow you to re-edit it. So to, to cut little, to make little cuts in it or do something on it. But the, the thing is with iMovie, iMovie and Rush are pretty much, pretty much alike. Well, there's a lot, well, I, I haven't done anything on two or three years. Okay. iMovie is, uh, it, yeah, iMovie is a great, great program. It really is. The only reason I suggested 
um, I don't suggest uh, using it for in, in this class here, is that if you have an Android, it's, it's a lot of times it won't work. So that's why the Rush will work with everything. Yeah, I, I just did it on the iPad. It was so easy to do. Right. So if you've got the, iMovie is a wonderful program. It, so you should be probably just fine with that. Because I, frankly, I love iMovie's titles. They have really creative titles that you can use. I like the transitions. And the transitions are fantastic. So they may have updated it since. Um, so, oh, yeah, 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 they have, yeah. <laughs> I had a profound question, but I suppose I forgot that one. It'll come up to you in a few minutes. Any other, uh, any other questions? Question. Yes, yes. Um, so when you're finished, you just say. So let me show you what we're going to do. And shrink, you know, what, the interesting thing about this program, which would. Uh, which I'm going to tell you right now is uh, this. There's a there's another program that they have on here too. I forget the name of it, but anyways, as you're building it, it automatically saves it. There is no save. And the same thing with this. You go up to fire, click, click save. There's no save. For those of us, the first time you do it, you think, oh, freaking out, Google University. There's no save on my thing. <laughs> so there is no save. It just automatically saves it as you're building it. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, you just, uh, the timeline is always there, and you can always rechange it and, and re, uh, re. So, with your pictures, you could have actually did the thing where it actually brings the pictures up, drops them down, and brings different things. Yes, the yes, exactly, exactly. Well, I was, as, as I were building it, I could have, could have done that as well. I was just wondering if you could. Right, I, I added the, the, the photos to, the, to it. And then the other thing is, is uh, as you, can, uh, you saw in, that, in my file, I dragged and dropped those uh, things so that this music, this video here, I already done this to save time, but I already made this one, so I just dragged that whole movie right into it. So again, as you're, as you're building these, if you're building a movie, if you already have a movie that you've done already and you want to include it in the movie that you're creating, you can just drag and drop it in there, and so you can do whatever you want. Um, the other thing is, too, is if you want to, you can uh, create this, uh, on the, if you're, say you've got the, the, the footage of, uh, uh, that you've shot from your, 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 when you've got a dog and it's a little, little puppy, and now they're you know, a little teenage dog, and you think, yeah, I've got all these sweet little, what can I do with this? You can get all those little video clips that you got from the day you got the dog all the way up until the night. so you might have two years with the video there, and you know, it's so what if it's 20, 30 minutes long? It's for you, but you have it, and you'll always have that there. So rather than just, again, the whole idea of this class is just to allow you to know that it, it's sort of like, um, for those of us who we had all the stuff that we shot when we were in the 50s and 60s, and, and the 80s when we first got video cameras, and we had all that stuff, and you know, we get boxes and boxes of video, you know, what the hell are we gonna do with it? This is the same thing. You end up finding you've got gigabytes of uh, video and photos in your camera, and every time you want to show somebody, you say, oh, I've got to show you this video clip. Well, you're scrolling, you're scrolling. And you know, this way you have it right there. You can, you can do it, and then you can transfer it back to your, cam uh, to your phone, and you can always have it with you if you want. So now we've got this done. Okay. So up here it says edit, share. We're going to go ahead and click share. We're going to name this. And why don't we just call this um, adoption to And we're going to save this. See right here, it's telling me, where do you want to save this file to? So we're going to click on here, and we're going to find a place to save it. And I'm going to say, let's, uh, let's save it here to that external drive that I have, and for the Grand Mesa Art Center, right here. And I'm going to choose that. There we go. And it says it's 1,044 megabytes, so it's like one, one gigabyte. And advanced settings, I don't think we need anything on there, but so it's telling me um, the preset, leave it at automatic. You don't, uh, you don't want to, unless of course you're gonna be 
sending it up to like YouTube or to Facebook, what they do is um, there's an algorithms with inside the, uh, the rendering program so that it renders it, so that it makes it really specific for either YouTube or Facebook or Vimeo. They all have the different, and it plays really smoothly on those programs. If you just want to save it to your hard drive, you can just, just leave it as it is, leave it for automatic. I'm going to, I'm going to choose YouTube because I'm going, to do, I'm going to send this up to YouTube. And 1080D, 1080p, that's the full HD, that's you know, the wide version. But see, it gives you, we can make it, you can drop it down. And then 4K, for the, the, uh, do you see that? Do you see it at 4K? See down there? It's good, so you, for, for many of our phones, now we can shoot in 4K. Frame rate is uh, 30. Um, on uh, the, on, on uh, film, when you shoot with film, uh, it's, it's always at uh, 24 frames per second. That's, that's what it is. You know when you see the, the old movies with the cops and they rah, 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 well that's because they would hand crank it. And uh, those were shot at what, with like a 120 frames or something like that. They were just really shot. So, but now all the movies, all the cinema movies that you see, everything's shot in 24 frames a second. However, this is digital. Everything's 30. So for any time you ever see anything that says frame rate, choose your frame rate if for any reason, it's always 30 because that's how it's shot on your iPhone or your Android. Everything shot, done on digitally is shot with 30. Now, really confuse the hell out of you. If, in fact, you really get into it, there's some programs that you can uh, download onto your phones, like there's a stem called Filmic Pro, which you can actually drop the frame right down to 24 frames. And when you shoot in 24 frames, it has, a, the human eye seems to be, it, it seems to be a really softer look to it. And it just, it, it's, a, it's easier to watch. Um, but the 30 frames, uh, you know when you're watching a, uh, a TV show and uh, where it's, it's, uh, it's real soft, that's usually shot in 24 frames. You know these soap operas or reality TV, how stark everything is, that's 30. So the 30 frames per second make it look really, and now uh, those of you who have like really high-end HD uh, television sets that are that uh, HK, doesn't feel like you're like, you're, it feels as if it's like you're right there. That's really done with like 60 frames per second and it's, an, and it's interlaced instead of progressive. So it's like really, it's, it's stark, it's, it's really intense. So 30. All right, um, stereo channel, perfect. We want to keep it stereo instead of mono. And the quality, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to, uh, to keep it at, I'm gonna keep it at a high rate. I want it to be really high, a nice high quality. So it plays really beautifully. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and export it. And it's saving it. It's saving it to that, into my file, which I chose it to. It's rendering it which uh, render is it's, it's almost the exact same thing as uh, when you bring your books back to the library and you see all those stacks of library books everywhere and the librarian uh, and the assistant librarians, they put them all back in the proper shelves. That's rendering in video. It's putting everything where it needs to belong. If you don't, if it doesn't render, it just, it wouldn't play. And what's also rendering is creating that movie. It's creating an MP4 movie. That P3 is mu uh, audio, MP4 is music and audio, I mean video. So we're just, it's got, uh, and it tells you about how much longer you've got left. And um, do all of you, how many of you know how to send something up to YouTube? Okay, all right, you do, okay. Real simple, in order to send something up to YouTube, you have to have a YouTube account. It's just that simple. You have to set up an account. Once you set up, it's all free, which is amazing. But once you set up the uh, an account, you create a channel. And you can name the channel whatever you want to name it. You know, David's YouTube channel. or uh, I, I've got one called Grandpa and Mel's uh, 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 World. Um, and then once you have that, you can upload. And you just go to the YouTube channel, your YouTube channel, and it has a little area that says your videos, and you can just follow the information, you'll learn how to do that, and then you upload it to your YouTube channel. 
And then that's it, it's that simple. For those of you who are gonna be just making this and putting it up on Facebook or Instagram or um, uh, to uh, uh, TikTok, again, you just have an account like you would, and you just send it right up uh, via, you can do, do it right from your phone, the same thing. Uh, this goes right from your phone up there. So the nice thing about this Rush program, about iMovie, or any of these other editing programs is that you can be out in the middle of nowhere, shoot this short little video that you've done, and if you wanted to put titles on or whatever, you can do it on your phone. This program works right on your phone. And you do the editing for it, you export it, and then you just go to your Facebook account and you choose a video and it uploads it right, right there from your campsite. If you're just sending this as an email to a friend. Um... Once, um, the problem with emailing a video is the size. Yeah. If you have like this here would be way too big right. for this. So, but in, the, in the, the settings, if you wanted to save it as a much lower, lower rate, you could save it uh, as a low quality and it would probably be just maybe a few megabytes. That being said, uh, it's still, for a lot of emails, you know, they won't accept anything over like maybe, you know, 50 megabytes. So that can be a problem. So, and share the link, that's the, thank you. That's the benefit of having a YouTube account, is that you can send it, and all you do is send them the link to the video. So the video can be as big as you want, but all you're doing is sending them the link on your email. And that's, again, the benefit of having a, the making the video and having a YouTube account. All right. Oh, done. Okay, now we go over here. We're just gonna make sure it's where it's supposed to be. Open up the hard drive. Hold on a second here. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I forgot to export it. See, it's down here, it says export. So now it's gotta, it's gotta, it's gotta, it rendered the movie, now it's gotta export it to the, as I wanted it. And, yes, render and export. That's, that's, that was a problem, I believe that was a problem there. Let's just make sure it, Say again? Once you have the once you have the once the video is done, you can drag and drop it to a thumb drive. You can uh, uh, you can make uh, DVDs out of it uh, uh, if you wanted to, uh, with the program. You would just if you wanted to have a. I hate DVDs because you just breathe on them and they skip. I don't understand. You can have them in a drawer, and under lock and key. After that, and you pull it out and you put it in, and it. <laughs> I don't kind of. So that's what's so wonderful about the thumb drives. So, so you can use this same system like if you're going to make a video of still pictures. Right. You'd use the same system. Same system. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you can. You can use this one. There's also um, uh, some really wonderful programs specifically for still photos. And. Um, that would be another, another class. Um, because in order to use this program, what you have to do is you've got to drag and drop every single photo into the timeline. And you've got to make the transitions between every single photo. Mm -hmm. There are programs out there specifically for putting together a photo montage where it does, you just choose all the photos you want, you tell it how long you want each photo to play for, like three seconds, five seconds, six seconds, whatever you want. You put all that information in, you click, create and it does it for you automatically and it adds all these really wonderful transition and it adds the music so it's a heck of a lot easier than this uh there's there's a program uh there's a it, uh, i'm trying to think of the name of the um it's a duplicate it's a dvd um it's with the c Phil, do you remember the name of the, the, the you remember, okay, I'm driving me crazy, the name of a, a creative something. Uh, just Google uh, photo, uh, uh, um, photo editing systems, photo editing software. 
and there'll be a whole bunch of them up there. I think there's something called Creative Suite, or um, it's something like that. There's a whole bunch of them out there. Um, and I would, on each one of them, it'll tell you uh, what the ratings are. Okay. That should be it. Okay, let's see. I just exported it. How come it's not showing up? So, huh? I see it. Where is it? Right here. Did I put it? No, I don't. No, I put it under G. I know, but that, that's, the, uh, that's the other one. That's the one I did before. I'm looking for the one we just did now. And I put it, I had put it underneath, I'm, it's driving me crazy. Hold on a second here, because, what? Oops, okay, hold on a second. Here's it, oh, oh, it went to, it didn't, it didn't take, it went to documents. I don't know why it did that. Okay, let's see if we, we're having under, There it is. All right, I went to documents. I don't know why it did that, but oh well. Let's see. Uh, there it is. Hi. For those of you uh, who normally hear my voice behind the camera, following Mel around and telling a little story. There you go. Okay, it just so uh, it just went to the wrong location. I will. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag and drop it onto my desktop. Now. Um, for those of you here, let me show you how simple this is. Do we have enough time? Okay. I'm going to go to uh, YouTube. So I'm going to my YouTube account. And... Going to, where is it, home? Oh, here we go, no, there we go, uh, your videos. Okay, so there's, the, there's my videos that I have, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to create. Oh man, it's me. Uh, Yes, it's me. Okay, I'm gonna to go to create. See that right there? Once you, have your, once you have a YouTube account, this is what you'd be able to do. Create, I'm gonna go upload videos. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select a file. We just put it on my desktop, we know that. And we know it was the adoption 220 right there. Open, and there it goes. So let's see, we're gonna call this um, Grandpa and Mel Jacobson Adoption. And then on here, you can go ahead and put a description of whatever you want to say about it. I can do that later on. Um, what you're gonna do is scroll down here, you'll learn about this after, but it's not made for kids. It's not a kid's video, so I'm gonna kick, no, it's not made for kids. And then this is really important right here, show more. You scroll down here and you're gonna see this little thing says tags. 
Everything on the internet is based on tags. Everything. So when you type in something you're looking for, like on YouTube University, you type in saying, uh, um, I need help uh, looking for uh, cooking with spaghetti. Well, spaghetti and um, help will come up on, in Google. And they start, anything that has anything to do with that, those words on there, will come up. So what, when you're in this, the tags, is you want to, the video, you want people to type in, you, you want to make this so that your friends and family around the world can see it. So you'd say to them, just type in uh, snow, on black, uh, bl uh, snow on black mesa. And then that's what you'd name it. And then that way they type in snow on black mesa and anything that has the words snow and black mesa will pop up. So what I'm gonna do is put on here, um, grandpa and Mel Jacobson, adoption. And then, whenever you put a little, uh, you separate all the tags between with a comma. So every time you put a comma in, the tag gets entered in there. So you never, you never put a comma after each word unless you want it. That's an individual tag. And then you could put up, you could put as many tags as you want in there, but Google stops like at about three or four. So if you, uh, you, you put, uh, sometimes you see people have all sorts of crazy tags on there. The, 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 the algorithm only searches for like three or four of them. Uh, after that, it just... So I'll just leave that like that. So what it's doing now is it's uh, uploading the video. Now right here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to choose a thumbnail for me. That's a little thing. Now, when you first open your YouTube account, um, it, you will not have the option to choose the thumbnails that you want. It just chooses for you. It usually chooses the first 10 seconds, something between the first 10 seconds, the last 10 seconds, and usually right in the middle of your video is where the, the YouTube uh, gets those thumbnails. If you want to have a very, really you know, specific uh, thumbnail so that that's the picture that you want everybody to see, you gotta wait about, let's say you have, I think it's, uh, you have to have a, a, a minimum of like a, a, a 100 to 200 subscribers, and it's, you have to be on have your account for at least, I think it's three months. So just keep that in mind. And then you can put your own thumbnail that you want later on if that's important to you. Otherwise, they usually choose a good one. Although every once in a while, you'll have something and it'll, it'll grab one, and it chooses one of them, and it's somebody going, you know, right in between it. <laughs> And then this will answer, you see right here, right there, that's the link. So that's the benefit to answer your question about having a YouTube account. If you want to share it with somebody, uh, at sending a large video via email is going to be a real problem. Once you send it up to YouTube, all you would do is cut, you know, uh, copy and paste this link. And you just send that, and as soon as they click on it, they, wa they get to watch it. Choose, a, uh, choose the thumbnail? Yeah. yeah, I think it's you need to have like a 100 or 200. Oh, well, that's not a bad thumbnail. Look at that. <laughs> Can't get better than that. Okay, then, then we click next. All right, and that's, so it's saying I'm ineligible because it's got music on there. So this is good. It says your video was ineligible for monetization due to a copyright claim. Now I paid for that song from Pond5. So what I gotta do is I gotta call Pond5 up and say, YouTube just dinged me telling me that I, I uh, they have the copyright claim. You need to call them and they will. So, so do you include that link? Huh? Do you include the link to your YouTube what, video when you call them? When I call Pond5, yes, I would tell them. I'd say, this is the link, this is what was just has happened, and they, they, they contact YouTube, they have a, a script that they sent to them saying it's the person that they own, they have a license. You do that online? Online, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really easy to do. So I'm glad that happened. Um, but I don't monetize them anyways. 
Okay, so that's that, that's that. Okay, then you hit next again. We don't need to do any, this is stuff that you, uh, if you wanted to add onto the, the, the YouTube, I never use any of this. Hit next again. Okay, climb and find, no problem, I'll, I'll deal with that later. Any other, nope, go ahead, next. Now, I can choose from a private link. Now this is the other thing that's really nice, is uh, with YouTube, say you've created your video and you have a friend of yours uh, or, or that uh, lives out of state and you say, will you do me a favor? I, I really want you to take a look at this. You think I need, is this okay? Should I make any changes to it? Uh, whatever, like I just did a little video for a, a friend of mine. Um, they're interviewing um, uh, their 95 year old woman who was telling stories about the family. Well, one of the stories she said wasn't very flattering for a particular individual. <laughs> and so I said, do you really want her to say this? You know, this is because she basically called him an asshole, you know? <laughs> And, um, and he's dead. <laughs> he says, so the guy says, well, he was an asshole. Everyone knows he was an asshole. He says, but let me go ahead. He says, let me send the link. So they sent the link to a couple other family members, and everybody said, no, he was an asshole. Let's do it. Yeah, so, so they're going to keep it. But, um, but that gave me an opportunity, the link, to share the link. So you create a video. You want other people to, to take a look at it before you finalize it and send it out to everybody in the world. You say, well, you look at it. That's the benefit of just doing it, sending it. I, um, I usually do it private. When it says private, that means that they can't click on it unless they have a password. Now, the only negative thing about that is with all the passwords we get, if you send it to a friend, was that lowercase or uppercase? Was it a number or letter? So I usually don't make it private. I make it, what you see here, it's unlisted. Unlisted means the only persons who can watch the video are those who have the link. The nice thing about that is that you send it to a friend of your relative and they say, I kind of like it, but I'm not sure about this part. I'm going to send this off to my, I'm going to let my friend Gloria look at it. And so that allows her to do it without having to send the password. So then they, they've all decided, you know what, I think it needs some changes. So then you go back, re-edit, make the changes, and then re-upload it again. Or if they say, it looks good, let's go for it. I'd say, let's, let's keep it as is. Then what you do is you go click on public. And that's what I'm going to do with this. So once I click public and I publish it, anybody, anywhere can see it. You ready? Okay, so. Ready? Yeah, and then you can... Uh, um, if, you, if they're happy with it, yeah, and once it's unlisted, then you just, all you do is just go into and hit public, uh, public. Otherwise, if they don't like it, you just delete the video and start all over again, or just make the changes. Okay, so here we go. Publish. So now, if I want to, I'll probably do this later, but if I, the nice thing about this is that this is what pops up with YouTube. To say, do you want to share it on Facebook? Do you want to also share it on WhatsApp, Twitter, Reddit? I mean, look at all these different places here. All these different places that you can share the video with. Uh, usually what I'll do is, or do you want to email the link to somebody? And it'll bring up the email, your program, and let you email it to them. Um, or I usually click on Facebook, and then I'll post it that way. Here's the link right here. This right here, you see that? It says copy. You click on this, it copies it to your clipboard. And then so you open up an email and it'll just, you can send it and clip it wherever you want to. I'm just going to close out on this for right now. I'll deal with it later. And there she is. There it is on there online and it's public and everybody can watch it. Ta-da! <laughs> Say again? Then you can make money on YouTube. Yes, yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Once you have a. No, uh, I think it's and you know what? To be honest with you, you only really start seeing any money if you've got something like 150,000, 200,000 subscribers. Then you start seeing a few hundred dollars. Uh, these, uh, any more, these people, some of these uh, YouTube people, they've got like a couple million. 
uh, subscribers, and they're yeah. bringing in some really nice money. It's just that they, uh, you've got you to hit a nerve. Mm -hmm. it just, it's just something that, that works or it doesn't work. You know, just, uh, it's, uh, it's quite a, it's, it's, I really give some of these people credit. Some of them have, quite yeah. Yeah. And so uh, Phil has been videoing this, so you, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, it will be on there so you can go back and see what um, David did the instructions. So, so subscribe. No, that, that's very, very true. Yeah, yeah it really is. And, uh, and then also the other thing that's nice about uh, social media is uh, if you have a Facebook account, uh, or an Instagram account, you sh uh, and you have a YouTube channel, you can, on your, you know, when you post your videos on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok uh, or any of these others, you can put on there for them to subscribe to your YouTube channel. So the video, this, you can bring them to that particular location. So, um, and you'll find Grandpa and Dad there. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. Any other questions that I can answer anybody about this or any other uh, video editing questions at all? So, uh, if you're a uh, Microsoft person, uh, does the Rush program work basically the same? Same thing. Yeah. Yep, that's again, that's uh, the nice thing about that program. And then also this, this others just as well um, for, that, are, that are all uh, Base, a Windows based, um, and it's yeah. You can use it to just in, and everything I showed you here will work the exact same way on Windows with YouTube and uh, Facebook. Everything's the same. The interface is all the same. Okay, I must be a good teacher, huh? All right. <laughs>